What's up, everybody? It's Professor Rako here, uh, continuing on with our chapter on accounting for income taxes. So this uh, video right here, we're going to focus on permanent differences. All right. So everything up to this point, we've really just been focused on temporary differences. And that's honestly the main focus of pretty much the first half of the chapter of these temporary differences that will reverse out. All right. Now, permanent differences. All right. So we talk about in the first video and even the other videos, you know, Temporary differences give rise to future taxable amounts, meaning income on the tax return, or future deductible amounts, things that you can subtract on your tax return. All right. So the uh, permanent differences are non-deductible expenses or revenues, meaning they will always be, so they are recognized on our financial statements, all right, but are never recognized in taxable income, meaning they affect our income statement. They do not affect our tax return. Okay, so they are permanent differences. All right, so here's just a few examples, all right, of non-taxable revenue. So it means it's revenue. So when it says non-taxable revenue, it means it's revenue on your financial statements, but it's not taxable. All right, non-deductible expenses means it's an expense on your tax return. I'm sorry, let me start over. It's an expense on your financial statements, but it's not deductible on your tax return. All right, so uh, you see up here proceeds from life insurance. All right, so that means uh, a lot of companies will uh, ins have life insurance policies on their top executives. All right, so notice here the payment of those premiums you can't deduct on your tax return. But then if one of your officers or executives dies, you don't get taxed on the money you receive from the uh, life insurance company. Okay, so that's one. I think the more common ones you'll see in examples are this interest on municipal bonds. All right, so you've probably already covered your chapter on bonds. All right, so remember bonds pay interest, usually semi-annually. All right, so uh, municipal bonds are just bonds of a municipality. So the you know state of California or Illinois or Tennessee or whatever the case may be uh, could issue bonds. If you buy, or even a city like Nashville or, you know, whatever, Atlanta could sell bonds and you buy it, all right? Typically, municipal bonds pay lower interest to the investors, all right? So how do they get investors to buy them if they're paying less interest? Well, that interest to the investor is not taxable, meaning I will have interest revenue, which will increase my uh, income, net income, but I won't have to pay taxes on that, okay? So it's non-taxable revenue. All right, another one is, so down the expense side are fines. Uh, so if I buy, let's say I get an EPA violation for uh, polluting a river, all right? Well, that's a, a fine. That's going to be expense to my company. It's going to lower my debt income. However, I'm not going to be, a, the IRS is not going to let me take a deduction and pay lower taxes because I'm violating the law, okay? So I won't be able to deduct that, all right? So permanent differences do not cause accounting problems because they are never included in the computation of taxable income. Okay, meaning they don't they don't go into taxable income. However, we need to handle them on our reconciliation because remember they're included in financial income. We need to back them out so they're not included in taxable income. So let's look at an example here. So we've got a uh, company reported taxes four hundred and twenty thousand. Uh, that's their FI. Assume the amount includes. Remember these amounts are included in that four hundred twenty thousand. 20,000 of non-taxable revenue, let's just call it uh, municipal bond interest revenue, and 5,000 non-deductible non expenses, let's just call that an EPA fine. All right, and then we also have this temporary difference with depreciation, okay? We just handled depreciation in the prior video, so uh, we'll handle that similar fashion here. It says the uh, deduction on the tax return is greater, meaning they use an accelerated method on the tax return, uh, by, and it's greater by 30,000, all right? So, uh, Tax rate is 35. So in our reconciliation, we still do the same thing. We're still starting with financial income. Okay. But now we got to back out. Uh, we still have to adjust. You know, we're still doing our reconciliation, trying to get down here to my taxable income, TI. All right. But now we have these permanent differences. All right. So remember, the non taxable revenue was 20000 and the expense was 5000 all right. The key thing is, what do I do here? Do I subtract them or I add them? What do I do with each item? All right. Now, remember, let's just take this revenue first. This revenue was added to get to that 420000 
meaning it was included. However, we don't have to pay taxes on it, so we want it to have a zero effect on our taxable income. So if it's included in the 420, if I subtract it here, that means I added it here and I subtracted it here, so it's now zero. It means it has zero effect on taxable income. All right, the expense, I'll be on the side, was subtracted somewhere to get down to 420,000. So if I add it back, its effect is now zero. I mean, I subtracted it once and I added it once, so its effect is now zero. Okay, but look, that's what I want. I want to take, because I'm trying to get to taxable income. So what I'm saying by backing these numbers out is they have zero effect on taxable income. And that's what we just said at the top of the page. Okay, so the easy way to remember permanent differences, if it's a revenue, you're usually added on your financial statement. So you subtract it. You're basically doing the opposite. Expenses get subtracted. So add it back. You're, you're just canceling out their effect on taxable income. All right, we have a temporary difference. Uh, of start, so this nets out to be 15. Let me just put that over here. All right, and then we have a difference of 30,000. All right, so what do we do with depreciation? So remember, if we have more depreciation, look up here, income, the deduction on the tax return is greater than the expense on the income statement. So we have more of a deduction on our tax return. So that means we're subtracting a bigger number on our tax return, which will make taxable income smaller. Therefore, we need to subtract that and that is a DTL. So go back to that prior video, the one we, the one right before this, the fourth video, and make sure you look at that shortcut and understand why I'm subtracting it. This is the most important thing, being able to remember what you add and subtract. I mean, the number, the difference of 30,000 is going to be given to you. You have to be able to decide what do I do with that number. All right, so that brings taxable income down to 375. All right, remember tax on that is just the taxable income times the rate, which was 35%. So that gives me 131 to 50. All right, so now we're ready to do our journal entry. Now remember, the permanent differences, the journal entries for these two items right here, those were already included to get to the 420 right here. So we've already done journal entries on those. We're not doing a journal entry here to, to, uh, to deal with those. They've already been dealt with. This, remember, up here is just our reconciliation where we're backing them out. So our journal entry deals with the current period taxes. So as always, we're going to have income tax expense. We have a DTL in this example, and we have income tax payable. So you can see the journal entries are pretty much the same every single time. All right, we already calculated that number, 131,250. Uh, the deferred tax liability, remember, it's the tax on the difference. The difference was 30,000, so 35% of that is 10,500. And that brings me to 141,750. All right, so that would be my journal entry for uh, the taxes after we have backed out and handled these permanent differences, All right? So if you get a longer, more comprehensive problem, which we will get to eventually, you know, you'll see permanent differences, temporary differences, all, uh, all included in the problem. You've got to be able to, one, pick out which ones are which, because I don't want to, you know, up here, you know, I don't want to say that either of these are deferred tax amounts. They're not. The only deferred item in this one uh, is this one right here, the only temporary difference. So it's permanent differences. They still have to be handled in the reconciliation. We just back out what uh, was already done. So revenues were added, so we subtract them to get them down to zero. Expenses were subtracted, so we add them to get them back to zero. All right? And then we handle the temporary differences separately. Okay? So make sure you see uh, when you get into these longer problems, be able to handle those come test time. They still affect our reconciliation. All right, but they're not an include, those items won't be included in the journal entry, okay? So make sure you're clear on that. All right, so stay tuned. We'll start adding, uh, dealing with changes in tax rates and getting into a little bit more comprehensive examples as we move forward. Uh, so please stay tuned for the next one. Hope you're enjoying these. Hope they're helping. Uh, and we will see you next time. Thanks.